Hey guys, Brian with Cajun Cardboard coming at you from the great state of Louisiana with another episode of NBA Past and Present with Coach Jonathan Pixley. Jonathan, welcome back to the show. It's been, we've, we've let too much time elapse between our last show and this one, and it's 100% my fault. I uh, I misscheduled something. You know, we always get our wires crossed. Right. I crossed these wires. It was my fault. It was my fault. <laughs> well, I, I, I mean, I, I, I just stared at a wall for about an hour last week. Yeah, our normal time that we do it, and I didn't really know what to do with myself. So I'm yeah. glad we're back. I'm glad well, you probably felt better after that hour than you do after we after we do this. This is this is maddening. We we both agree. Well, you you don't agree. We're we're working on a list today. We're going to talk about the ten greatest players that have never won a title. Yeah. Okay. And we're going to rank them in order, and then we're going to talk after we finish our list. And this is the deal. Normally, it's like your list and my list, and we bitch about it and we argue. And we yeah. make points for each of our lists. This is going to be a collaborative effort. So we do each have our lists, yeah. but I want us to come to, together, right? Uh, like, like, like Republicans and Democrats are going to come together over the next year and be on exactly the same page. That's what we're going to do, right? So, so just like Ukraine and Russia are about to be on the same page, China and the U.S., Democrats, Republicans, sure. uh, you know, the Grizzlies and the Warriors, we're going to come together uh, and create a unified collaborative list. So that's what we're going to do. We're also going to talk about five, Jonathan current player or, or three or four or five current players who if they retire and they don't win a ring they will fall into the top 10 players to have never win uh never won a title um and we we need to talk i think we could take it even further and go okay who would they replace in our list that's what we're gonna do yeah. we're gonna do with some of the, i mean honestly man i'm telling you some of these guys may jump to like fourth or fifth i mean there's guys out there that are really going to be meaningful historically uh and, and obviously players perceive value uh diminish you know it, it, at the peak of their nba career it's way up here right. and then as their career goes down think about kobe in the last few years notwithstanding his last game think about tim duncan in his later years think about shaq as a journeyman tumbleweed in his last few years yeah. the value and the perceived historical relevance goes down and then they retire and then we're like Oh damn! That they, they really, and then we see the Hall of Fame enshrinement. We relive their videos, we watch their highlights, then we hear other players talk about them with great reverence. And so, when that happens, it's kind of like this little undulation. And ultimately, they continue to go. Most of them continue to go up after their career has uh, has unfolded. And that that same can be said for cards. Generally speaking, uh, cards kind of work the same way, except the peak usually is before they hit their NBA peak, which is really weird. The card prices are usually higher before they accomplish anything, which makes no sense because it's all well, hype and it's all built in. Yeah. yeah, so you know, um, you've anyway, about- so and then at the end, I, I left this out. At the end, we're going to do something called Famous Nicknames. And uh, it, it, it's a tribute to um, – there's a really famous 1990s insert card – uh, featuring some of the great NBA players that have nicknames. So I decided to call this segment Famous Nicknames. So at the end, I'm going to give you nicknames that I pulled off basketballreference.com, and I'm going to give you one nickname at a time for a particular player, and you're going to try to guess who that player is. Some of them you'll get, and some of them you're going to be like, well, no one has ever called this person this name, even right. if his parents would not have gotten the answer right. right. So uh, we're going to do that at the end. So uh, starting with our uh, – Let's just skip through current events. We're going to talk about NBA stuff, like real NBA stuff next episode. I want to talk about these guys that have never won a title. Tell me number 10 on your list. Let's just get rolling. Okay. First of all, there was a time in our relationship where we would never have been able to create a list together. Yes. We would have never agreed on it. Okay. Which means if we can pull this off, those other things that you listed – they they have a chance of happening because if we can do this right yeah. now, I believe yeah. it. So, all right, get, number look, 10. Just get over to China. Just talk it out. Everything's going to work out. We're basically the same. Send uh, Rodney. Send it's Rodney. Basically, everything's yeah. everything. This communism yeah. and, and capitalism is, is basically the democracy is basically the same. Um, yeah, let's uh, let's. That's it. That we're gonna kill it right there with the politics talk because it'll get it'll get terrible and the comments will get unruly. So uh, it would be one way to get more views on our shows. But uh, but let's go with your number ten. I've got a tie for ten, so I'm not gonna tell you mine. We're always gonna start with your list and then we're gonna talk through it. Tell me what you got. Okay, number ten on my list is Tracy McGrady. Um, he was a seven time All League guy. I did not know that. I did not okay. know he made seven All NBA teams. Um, you know. I, I don't – I think he ended up with about 18,000 career points, so didn't eclipse the 20,000 point mark. Yeah. Uh, But seven-time All-League, I mean, in his prime, he was as good a scorer as there was. 
and uh, did not win a title. Planned on going to Houston and pairing with Yao Ming, and they thought that they'd have a chance to do it. And go back, go back before that. Talk about yeah, what was supposed Grant, to happen in Orlando. Grant Hill, Tim Duncan, him. Now that, that the greatest big. And and remember, let's 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 remember that would have been all three of them in their prime if healthy, and that well, would have been the greatest big three of all time. You say that, um, and, and yes, you're correct. But nobody realized McGrady was that yet because he was coming from Toronto. That's right. No, you're right. You're right. You're right about that. Yeah. Right. But those well, he, three, yeah, yeah. he was going there to be the beta, and then yeah. you know Grand Hill's ankle and the horrible you know history of Grand Hill's ankle. Uh, so, so this begs the question, and I'm just going to pose this, and we're going to work through this together. Uh, my, uh, do you? The first question is, do you have Carmelo Anthony on your top ten list? I did not. And then, the, that, so there's your question: Is Carmelo Anthony not better than Tracy McGrady? And I know we don't like we don't like jab step jab step yeah. contested jumper fadeaway shit well, over and over. But, that. There's yeah, but Tracy McGrady also put his nuts on you. You know, and he would he's got some of the greatest dunks ever, and and he played with flair, and he's got you know signature moment. I mean, Carmelo so is Carmelo Anthony better than Tracy McGrady historically? They're similar. They're very similar players from a standpoint of being pure scorers who didn't win. Um, and I guess what it comes down to is. Carmelo's career numbers are going to be better, right? Uh, because he his he had a little bit more longevity. Carmelo did take Denver to a Western Conference Finals uh, where they lost to the Lakers. I he don't did. think Grady he ever did. did anything like that. Um, so the argument to be had is who had the better career. You may be right, man. I, I think I think it's very close. Uh, Tracy McGrady in a shorter career had more All NBAs. Uh, I'm going to hit the comparison feature here and we'll pull it up. We'll, we won't spend too much time because we're on number 10 here. Um, Carmelo, you know, let's go to let's go to uh, per 36 minutes just to balance it out. So Carmelo averaged two more points, and that's pretty much what they did. Tracy McGrady was much better from a steals and blocks perspective. They rebounded the same. Their free throws, Carmelo was a good free throw shooter. McGrady was a bad free throw shooter, 74.6. That surprises me. Mm -hmm. uh, Carmelo never passed the ball. Uh, 2.8 assists. Those were two air balls that his center caught in <laughs> each game. Uh, 2.0%. Let's go to uh, – Melo was actually a better three-point shooter percentage-wise and made more. Um, 44%. They're – dude, they're insanely close. Who was so the better defender? Kind of the awards and – was McGrady a better defender? I don't even remember, honestly. I, I don't remember either one of them caring about that side of the ball. What is their defensive rating down here? Uh, their defensive rating, Mello, Mello was actually a worse defender. So Tracy McGrady is a little bit better. Their offensive rating is identical. The PER, which is the big thing now, Tracy McGrady was, based on the PER, more efficient, a more efficient player, but a much worse true shooting percentage, which is strange. Uh, they're what and what. Now, I'm going to throw one more player into this mix. And you tell me if I'm crazy here. I might be crazy, but this is just came off the top of my head. Actually, I'm going to give you two more people. Mm -hmm. uh, is Allen Iverson on your list? Yes. Okay, so we'll leave him out for now. Is Pete Maravich on your list? He is not. Okay, so he's the he's the third one with Mello, Maravich, and McGrady. He, he Those three, I, I didn't have time to really dig into the weeds, but those three I kind of grouped all together. I, I think Carmel – I know this is going to sound weird because, again – Maravich is from another era, and people remember his college accolades. Yeah. Uh, and Maravich's peak uh, in the NBA might have been better than Melo, but I think Melo, top to bottom, just you know, we're gonna we're gonna give people flowers for longevity here. We're not gonna be those assholes that are like, well, LeBron's only good because he's been healthy for twenty years and played twenty seasons in the NBA. It's no, like that's a good thing. Only good he's big, you know. Yeah, yeah, right. that's not a, that's not a problem. Like we reward people for playing. Every day, you know, a lot of games, and he's resting every game now, but like playing a lot of games, I think is something you should reward somebody for. Um, you know, that personally, that's me. Like that we reward, we, we give, give accolades to Walter Payton. We give accolades to Emmett Smith. Those dudes carried the ball a freaking million times for a million years. That deserves to be rewarded how and applauded. Many, how many all NBAs did Carmelo have? And more. Uh, I'm sorry, one less. He had six, I believe. Let me, uh, well, let me find As long as he's close, in my opinion, then yeah. Then that, that here's here's Tracy McGrady's accolades that you know obviously Hall of Famer seven times All Star seven times All NBA two times scoring champ Carmelo yeah. Anthony is six times All NBA ten times All Star one time scoring champ which I forgot about yeah. um, and he's on the NBA seventy fifth and McGrady's not and that, 
fair or not. I don't think McGrady is, right? Is he? No, he's not. He's no, not. he's not. Um, I'll tell you this. A lot more people collect Tracy McGrady basketball cards than Carmelo Anthony. Uh, Pete Maravich will be the next one. I mean, let's pull up Pete uh, just to make sure we're not missing something here. I didn't know his dad press played. Four All-NBA, five All-Stars. Uh, one time, I mean, they're close, dude. They're all close, and he's in the 75th. And obviously, he did things in a, in a significantly more flashy way. You know, if you look at this picture over here, he wore, he did it all wearing this black helmet. He's wearing the black helmet uh, with the chin straps. He just straps them in and just plays with his little leather helmet uh, like the old school football players. But one interesting thing about Pete Maravich is he only needed one nickname ever because it was so freaking good. Pistol Pete, yeah. that's it. You know, all these other guys are 12. I think we would agree he shouldn't be in the 75th. He should not be in the 75th. He, it, no. It's based on college. It's like it, yeah, it, he he's he's riding his college. Yeah, he's riding college into that. No question about that. Um, Look, I'll just go, like Stacy King, I'll, you know, Stacy King should not be in the top 75, but his college <laughs> career was accomplished at the great University of Oklahoma, and he snuck in there. Um, all right, that's too much time on 10. Say say what you're gonna say. What you got? So I think I think there are two other guys, and you may have them on your list, that fall in this same scores who didn't win a title thing. And Go. It's Alex English and Adrian Danley. Um, uh, I don't have either one of those in my top ten. Right. I think you could look at those, but I think Carmelo. But I think I think we could look at them and, and certainly discuss it. Are those guys better than? I'm going to give you my number nine. Are those guys better than Dominique Wilkins? No. Okay. Well, then that Dominique Wilkins is my nine. Is he, he he he's going to be higher on your list, isn't he? He is. Well, no, he's my eight. Okay, so we're close. So give me your nine. Give me your nine and let's talk. So so if we had to choose right now and we had to come to terms, uh, McGrady, Carmelo, Maravich, I think Carmelo. Carmelo. Yeah, I agree with you. You you and I both cannot – we did not like Carmelo, which is weird because we also played offense and no defense, and we also did not mind taking contested shots. True. You know? Very true. Strange. Um, Um, Okay, so give me your nine. Uh, Nine for me – and I know I know he's going to be higher on your list. Is Steve Nash? Um, I have him as nine. And I'll, and I'll be honest with you, I'm that guy who, even though I thought he was phenomenal, I didn't think he should have won either MVP that he won. And so I'm taking that into account. Um, but he's my nine. But he was seven time All NBA. Uh, his career numbers are not, you know, averages aren't great. Uh, but I mean, dude, he was he was pace and space. He was the guy, you know. Well, look what I've got pulled up. I've got Nash versus Stockton uh, because I, 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 you're you've got Nash really low. Like, we're gonna have to work through this. We're gonna have to talk through it. Okay. Um, I have Stockton. That, you've got high. Nash really, really freaking low, dude. Uh, if you Stockton look at their adjusted for thirty six minutes again, here's the deal: completely different era. Nash in that Phoenix Suns team with Boris Diaw and Dan Tony and Grand Hill and. You know, Joe Johnson for a touch and Amari Stoudemire. They ushered in um, – and um, Raja Bell. We don't want to forget Raja Bell. Uh, they ushered in that era of pace and space, right? They, yeah. they completely changed the game where sometimes a three was better than a two, right? A mid-range two. And that, that was right. like, oh, wow, really? I didn't know that. I didn't realize it. And then they plugged it into the computer and they're like, yep, you're right. We should take a lot more threes. Yeah. Uh, so – I've got Nash and Stockton pulled up. Nash uh, averaged more points in Stockton per 36. Uh, obviously, the steals for Stockton, uh, you're talking about him giving his team literally two and a half extra possessions a game. That's pretty impressive. Uh, more assists for Stockton, which is not surprising. Um, and again, this is going to include both of their very later years. Uh, Stockton's very later years were much better than right. Nash's very later years in his right. career. Uh, they neither one of them rebounded all that great. Um, Nash is a much better free throw shooter, but Stockton was no slouch. Stockton, believe it or not, uh, I didn't know Stockton shot so good from three, man. He shot 38% from three. That's great pretty good. Shooter. He was a great uh, shooter. Great yeah, I didn't shooter. realize he was a good three point. I knew he was a decent shooter and he, he was really a high percentage from the field, but I didn't know he was that good from three. Yeah. Um, to shoot 51% and 38% from three, he must have shot really good from two, like really freaking good. Yeah. Um, Stockton's better, but he ain't that much better. If you throw out the longevity issue, and again, you can't throw out the longevity issue, but uh, I think Nash is better than nine. I think Nash has to be better than nine. Is Nash better than Dominique Wilkins? No, not to me. Really? No, not to me. And here, here, just hear me out, okay? Okay. Nash was never the best player on a team that you were worried about winning a title. I, now, that's not I'm true. Not, that's I'm not. That, I'm that's not that's bullshit. I, I, I never worried about them winning a title. 
And the reason why I'm saying you should have worried that the, the, when their dudes came off the bench, the series that killed that series, and they were dethroning the Spurs. They were there. Just hear me, just hear me out, okay? My thought is this: even on that situation, because I knew you were going to bring that up. All right, it's arguable that I mean, you could argue. I thought he was the best player on that team, but you could argue that he wasn't because Amari Stoudemire was a freaking man child at that point. Okay? He was good. He um, was good. So my point is, he definitively, right, he wasn't ever that guy. And so if you look at his all-league stuff, I think, what did he? how many times did he make all-league? Nash, seven. Okay, so he made seven times. He made he was two MVPs again, which is, to me, he shouldn't have won either one. He was never the best player in the league. Um, never. That's, in, fact, in fact, he was never close to the best player in the league. He would have never been a guy that you would have said, I want him before anybody else. Well, Jonathan, you could say that about no, no exaggeration. Seventy-five percent of the MVP award winners, probably. Yeah. Uh, Malone was never the best player in the league. Barkley was never the best player in the league. But I think he's further down on the list. Okay, I understand. I, I get what you're saying. You want to ignore completely everything up in this section? <laughs> no, I want to ignore those two MVPs. <laughs> okay, just the two MVPs. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Um, um, okay. All right. Here. So, you're, who's here. your number nine? Who's your number nine? Number nine for Nash. me is Nash, right? Okay. Uh, um, that's I'm fine. Good. I can move Nash down. I don't have a problem with that. I still think Nash is better than Dominique Wilkins. So um, we can we can flip it. Yeah, we might have to flip that one. Uh, we've agreed that Mello is is ten. All right. I'm gonna try to try to get through this and figure this out. Okay. So uh, who else? Who, give me your number eight is My Wilkins. Number eight uh, was Dominique. Number yeah, was Dominique. Right. So we know Dominique's going to be. You know, so let's just go this way. Is Dominique better than George Gervin? No, not to me. He wasn't. Okay, so Gervin's higher on your list as well. Yes. Okay. Is Dominique better than Nate Thurman? I did not have Nate Thurman on my list. You need to look at that son of a bitch's stats. I won't. <laughs> oh, dude. Let's pull up nasty Nate Thurman. He's special. He's got some numbers I don't think you remember. Uh, five times all defensive, seven times all star. Did they not do? Oh, he he might have gotten on. screwed playing Hit the wrong the era. Go to his field goal percentage, please. That's forty three percent. Yeah, move move on, please. Can we move on? You're right. Okay, thanks. You're right. Okay, but let's did move. you know? Let's just give Nate some flowers here. He was twenty and fifteen like seven times. All right, it's a different era. I get it. Okay. All right, we'll leave Nate out of there. Nate's off the list. You're right. I, I reached on Nate, and Dominique he Wilkins is, is better. You know it, who should be above, if you have Thurman on there, Clint Capella will take his spot at the end of the – after it's over with. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Are we okay going Mello, Nash, and Neek as 10-9-8? Well, let's do Neek 9, right? Because Neek 9? I, I, I can agree to flip that. I can agree to flip that. Yeah. Because Nash does, whether you like it or not, he does have two MVPs, and he is, you know, Neek's not top ten in any category. Nash is, you know, top ten assists and in in his career fifty forty and almost fifty forty ninety. He was more impactful. He, I mean, he was more impactful than Dominique. You know. Um, okay, so Mello, Neek, Nash. Yeah. All right, I'm going to start scratching people out that we've done. Okay, so that leads us to your number ten, nine, eight, seven, seven. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I had Patrick Ewing at number seven. Ewing or Gervin? Uh, Gervin was higher for me. Do we know that or do we want to look at this? Let's look at this. Uh, it's hard because we're comparing different eras, drastically different eras. Ewing, as far as we know, snorted very little cocaine before games. <laughs> um, so that gave him probably – that's a big disadvantage uh, from what I've heard. I, when, I, rarely before we went and played pickup ball at the park – did I need to snort cocaine? But on the rare occasion, right, where I was asked to play defense or maybe carry a little bit more of the load if you were feeling bad, I would do two lines maybe just to make sure I could get through the day and, and be more alert. It, it's, really, it's really frowned upon now, but back then it was certainly normal in the uh, early 90s. Look, I mean, you do what you got to do. You, know, you do what you got to do to play pickup basketball. I mean, what, where are your priorities? Uh, let's see, Patrick Ewing um, – 11 times all star, seven times all NBA, just never the best at his position, just, just by fate, you know, because of not, where not, he not fits. Even close. Not, never even close to the best at his position, in my opinion. Well, he's top five every year of his career. Yeah, I'll give you that. But you're right. I mean, I see it. 
I think Gervin was five times like first team all NBA. Four time scoring champ, 12 time all star, same all NBA, two all ABA, so really nine times. Look at um, his Look at his he numbers. was the MVP of an all star game. What an accomplishment that is. Uh, to be an MVP of an all star game where all of the best players do their absolute best to win and just do anything it takes to win. Back then, they actually yeah. did count by the They actually might have. I don't know. I'd have to go watch it. I have a feeling yeah. they probably didn't go balls to the wall no, like they either. No, no, you don't, don't, don't. You know, I, I don't know. It ain't like today. It ain't like today. Okay. In the 70s, mm, I don't know. Maybe. Um, I'm not he's NBA 75th. Obviously, yeah. Ewing's also. Gervin is better. Uh, he is. Ewing's PER is 21. Uh, Gervin's is 21.4. Ewing's is 21. It's on the nose. Win shares, Gervin 126. Ewing 116. We'll go. Uh, is there anybody else we need to talk about in there other than uh, Ewing and Gervin as not, the seven not, and six spot? Give me another no, name. Not to me because the rest of them, in my opinion, are head and shoulders above six down. We, we, are we agreed that Iverson's not as good as Carmelo? Or Iver, we haven't gotten to your Iverson yet? I haven't gotten to him yet. Okay, then we're going to have an issue coming up because you've left out somebody that cannot be left out. Maybe not. You forgot we'll somebody. No, we'll um, see. We'll see. No, I'm telling you, yet you've, you've forgotten somebody. Oh, wait. You know, maybe you haven't. Maybe you haven't. Okay, this might still work out. Um, we have five left. Iverson is better than Ewing and Gervin. Yes. And we're going to go Ewing seven. And we're going to go Gervin six. That's exactly what I had. And you know, I, and you guys watching and listening, uh, you know, to the channel right now, go. I want you to make your list as we make our list and argue with us. And I want to see comments. I mean, that's why we do these videos because these lists are tough and, and you know, we can be swayed up or down, but we're just trying to kind of slot them in the right, um, you know, in the right spot. And everybody's entitled to their opinion, but, you know, ours is right and yours is wrong, but. Uh, everybody's entitled to their opinion. And so we're just kind of trying to put together the most accurate list possible. Mello, Neek, Nash, Ewing, Gervin. Yep. Okay. Next. So this is where we, we have to have the same top five because there's no way any of these five could not be in your top 10. I have to imagine it's got to be. Right. It's got to be. Go ahead. Um, number five for me was Iverson. I had him at okay. number five. That, that's where that's who I would put number five as well. I don't even need to argue about that because he's not as good as my top four. There are going to be young people watching this video that are going to think we are on crack cocaine, mm -hmm. uh, not yeah. to mention cocaine twice, that now I'm incriminating myself. Yeah. It sounds like I really do cocaine. Uh, yeah. But Iverson was not as good as John Stockton uh, historically from an accomplishment standpoint. You may have liked the way he dressed, the way he played, the crossovers. You may have liked to watch him play more. But as far as being a better basketball player and what he accomplished on the floor, he did not accomplish what uh, Stockton accomplished. Um, in fact, I don't think by any measurement he would compare other than he had an MVP, right? Correct. And the other thing is that people are going to – are going to frown upon is like, you know, well, Iverson was a warrior, this, that, the other. First of all, Stockton was one of the toughest. Nobody, toughest nobody played a higher percentage of games than John Stockton. Exactly. And then the other <laughs> thing is those be like, well, yeah, you know, he went to the finals and the reason they lost because they played the Lakers. Well, the Jazz went to the finals twice. And the reason they lost is because they played the Bulls. Yeah, the, the greatest game. team ever assembled. The and the only reason that, that Iverson went to the finals was because the East was incredibly weak. In fact, who, they, who did they beat in the Eastern Conference Finals that year? Toronto, who had Vince Carter and name another player. Don't make you know? me. I will. I will think through this, and we will name players from those expansion Raptor teams. We can name – Peterson. Uh, <laughs> Mo Davis. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Uh, just to put it in perspective, similar PERs, but you want to talk about warrior, and you want to talk about longevity, and you want to talk about playing games in the seasons that you had in your career – Allen Iverson's win shares and win shares is an estimate of the number of wins contributed by a player to his team throughout his career. It's basically you take their individual stats, apply it to the teams they were on, how many wins that player contributed, right. you know, to that team winning 99 for Iverson. Look at, oops, that's Gervin. Gervin had more. Look yeah. at Stockton. 207, <laughs> twice as many. Okay. So, uh, again, 1,500 games. Iverson played 900 games. Yeah. Iverson played 82 games uh, once. Ever. Watch this. 
Oh, this is scary. This is like this a- is the scariest shit ever. I did a whole video on this. Yeah. Stockton played 82 games, one, one, two, three, four, five times in a row to start his career. What? Took four games off. Look at again, the again, 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 again. So basically an eighth of a decade. And then had some injury bugs where he played 64 and 50, yeah, which is dude, good for modern 50, players. The 50 was a shortened season. It was a shortened season. Yeah, he led the league in that year. So 50 was he, – he played the most games in the league, 50, because it was short strike short. And you're right, you're right. And then 82 to end his career at age 37, 38, 39, and 40. Uh, yeah. So different level of durability there. Him and Malone, I think, are unique. And and I guess you could include A.C. Green. But, I mean, amongst all-time yeah. immortal type players, and Stockton and Malone were just totally next level on that. Yeah. Um, anyway, it couldn't have been more different off the court. Thank God for Stockton. Um, okay, so we're on the same page. Gervin, we're on the same page. Iverson at five. All right, so our big four, this is not easy as far as coming up with an order, I don't think, especially at one, two, but I think I know where you're going to fall. So number four for you is Elgin Bagel or Stockton. No, no. Um, and this is a real struggle for me, man. It really is. But you didn't um, leave, leave Elgin Baylor out. No, 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 they're in. It's just Barkley, Malone, Stockton, Elgin Baylor. So Barkley was my four, and okay, was, now that surprises me. It was You're tough, a huge Barkley guy. It was tough, and the reason why it was tough is because I was trying to decide. Um, originally, Barkley was two for me. Okay, okay, but then I went back and started looking, and I was like, okay, I, you can't put him ahead of certain guys. And then the longevity factor with where you know, I mean, look, Stockton is the all-time leader in the history of the game in two categories. So two you, major you, categories. Like, right. This is not. Three point shooting percentage. So, three you know, percentage. Barkley being an MVP, five times first team All League, you know, eleven times All NBA, which is ridiculous, by the way, to make eleven All NBA teams. Right, that's tough, especially in that era. Um, so I had him four just because what Stockton did over the course of his career. So Stockton would be three for me, and Barkley four. <clears throat> yeah, that's. It's, I'm not going to sit here and compare Barkley to Stockton because it's going to drive us crazy. But well, Carmelo totally and Barkley played the same position in the exact same era. So no. those two we can compare. And most people would, uh, I guess, uh, younger folks would probably just assume Charles Barkley was better because uh, the way he played was sexier, right? 11-time um, All-Star, 11-time All-NBA. Carl Malone, a 14-time All-Star, 14-time All-NBA. So there's your longevity factor, you know, coming in. When they were healthy, they were both All-Stars and they were both All-NBA every year forever as long as their body held up. The yeah. difference, Carl Malone, four-time All-Defensive, and he was an elite defender, uh, a really and terrible in his later years, but a really elite defender in his prime. Um, we don't care about All-Star MVP or rebounding champ that much. They're all rookie. Who cares? Uh, Barkley won one MVP. I think Carl won Two MVPs. I thought he won one. He won two. He Damn. Won two, okay. Yeah. Now Both look, all I, NBA seventy fifth. Malone wins. What's that? Because it, it, this is important, and because I'm a you know I'm a big peak guy, right? Okay. Yep. So at their peak. If you gave me their five best seasons, each of them, okay, at their peak, I think Charles Barkley's peak. He was a better player than Carl Malone was ever. Okay, but. And, and not by much. I'm not saying by And much. that would have been right around 92 where that, that peak of the peak, right? Right after the dream team. Ended. That probably ended because people forget about him in Philadelphia when he yeah. was unstoppable. They were, they were just terrible, yeah. right? Um, but – because he could do more things than Carl Malone could do, right? Um, oh, for sure. Ball handling-wise, passing-wise, all of the above, yeah. Well, he's a better rebounder too, you know. Uh, I mean, all those things. Carl Malone's a great rebounder, but not, not like this dude. But anyhow – uh, but over the course of, I mean, you look at Malone's numbers, dude, he's a machine. He was a robot. I mean, every year, look at what he did, you know, so you can't, you can't uh, put Barkley ahead of him, but I think at their peak, I'd have taken Barkley. Dude, he was freaking good. I'm staring at Barkley. Jonathan, he ended his career on a 15 uh, year streak of double figure rebounding. <laughs> I know. But my I guess mean, is. So did Carl Malone. Let's go look. Well, he, his last year, he couldn't do shit. But yeah. Carl Malone had a streak here where uh, he dipped below 10. for. Yeah, 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 yeah. Barkley, probably a better re – yeah, for sure, Barkley, a better rebounder. Carl Malone, a higher scorer, for sure, uh, for a longer time mm -hmm. and more durable. And um, Barkley's field goal percentage is also better. 
Barkley's Barkley a better field goal percentage. Yeah. I mean, he, there were years he shot 56, 57 percent, if I'm correct. I think I'm right yeah. about that. He's career 54. Barkley's career – I mean, uh, Barkley's career 54. Malone's career 51. PER is is too tough to call. But Barkley's win share is 177, which is fantastic, right? We saw – you know, who did we look at earlier? It was 99. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, 234 for Malone. So higher than Stockton even. Yeah. Uh, that that matters. I mean, it, when you're looking at an entire career start to finish. So, Bruce, okay, I'm fine with that. Um, 14 time All-NBA. 14 times All-NBA. That's You're saying Stockton for sure better than Barkley. It's hard for me, man. It's so hard. I got to. I got have to say it just because he's the all-time assistant steal leader, man. I mean, and 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 didn't have a. It wasn't like he hung on and couldn't play anymore at the end to get those numbers. You know, I saw it. I agree. Uh, but the argument against it is John Stockton was never even the best player on his own team, <laughs> right? And Barkley John was, Stockton never won an MVP, right? Hmm. I could be swayed either way. I really could. I really could. But we know Barkley and Stockton are better than Iverson, Gervin, Ewing, Nash, Neek, and Mello. Yeah, I think so. For sure. I think so, too. Yeah. So here's what we have so far, and we know we're down to the last two. Carmelo at 10, Dominique at 9, Nash at 8, Ewing at 7. Ewing is better than Nash for sure. Yeah, I think That's so. something we might – Maybe you could. We you might can, want to read this. Uh, can, George Gervin was you, you just just us glancing at this today, and you talking just for a few seconds. You reminded me Gervin was freaking good. Gervin was oh, really good. damn good, uh, yeah. and I did not realize that. Um, and then Iverson, Iverson is better than Gervin for sure. That also is arguable. Yeah, is. that's something to look at. Yeah. Um, again, the cocaine. So uh, <laughs> then uh, after Gervin and Iverson, you got Barkley and Stockton. In um, that order, which leaves us with two, man. It leaves us with Elgin Baylor and Carl Malone. Yeah, I had I had Elgin Baylor too, um, and and the only reason again I had him originally as three or four. I can't remember because I had Barkley at two. The dude was ten time first team All NBA, ten time. Okay, um, this is going to be a tough comparison. Let me let me just t- show you the most important statistic. I want you to look at what I'm highlighting. Mm-hmm. Games. Yeah. Elgin Baylor played 846 games. Mm-hmm. It's almost like Carl Malone played two Elgin Baylor careers. No, I know. And 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 look, numbers wise, I mean, why well, I, I have Carl Malone first. I know. I, I that's what I'm saying. Like, I think if Carl Malone had played a normal length career and had normal durability and played 70 games a year instead of 82. It would be a lot closer. It's just, yeah. dude, he's just – win yeah. shares is a huge number, and Carl Malone's is double. I mean, he yeah, just absolutely. did what Elgin Baylor did for a hell of a lot longer. Uh, I do before um, – uh, well, I don't want to I don't want to belabor it. So, yeah, I mean, 11 times All-Star, 10 times All-NBA. Obviously, all these guys are going to be 75th anniversary teams. 14-time All-Star, 14-time – he just did it better. Uh, he didn't necessarily do it better. He just did – Close enough to what Elgin Baylor did for a longer, and he for did longer. it probably in a you know a more competitive era, I would think. The other thing that I, I based it on too, like just the fact that Baylor was that high for me, was you go back and you listen to the guys from that era: Bill Russell, you know, rest his soul; Wilt, same thing; Oscar Robertson, Jerry West. All of those guys will tell you that Elgin Baylor was arguably the best player in the world at the time. You know, they'll yeah. all say the same thing about him. So um, he had the highest praise from the highest level of peer that he could have. Yeah. Um, so anyhow, yeah. And he just never won a title, which, you know, did it hurt his uh, legacy? Yeah, sure. Sure did. I mean, you know, Jerry West going to the finals nine times and winning one, you know, that, that doesn't help. If Jerry West wins four titles, is he top 10 of all time for sure? A hundred percent. You know, so – well, here's the, we you and I sometimes disagree on this. Is, is it better to go to nine and win one, or would he have been better off winning one out of one? I, I reward the guy who's been to nine. Oh, 100%. <laughs> you know? just yeah. like LeBron. I, I people are like, well, Jordan was six for six. LeBron is, you know, whatever he is, you know, four for eleven or yeah, whatever. I don't think I don't think that's a fair comparison. Though. I think you talk about like the one and nine versus one one. I think. Yeah. Would you rather win two and go twice? 
or win one and go nine times? Like that's, oh, now that's a great question. That's, that's a great question. Yeah. So anyhow, hmm. that's tough. It is tough, man. It's 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 tough, and and intelligent minds who know the NBA could disagree on what's better: winning one out of nine or winning two out of two. Yeah. <laughs> Most yeah. people look at aggregate numbers, and so they're going to look at uh, they're going to look at finals finals appearances where you don't win. They're going to look at that as a failure, and that's yeah. how people try to peg LeBron. Well, he yeah. can't win. He's a failure. He's lost more than he's won. Well, that's true, but he's also been to a hell of a lot more than most. If he had won two and lost 10. I get it. Yeah. yeah I'm with you. But he won four, dude. I mean, stop. To right. be fair, he, he won one. I think we're on the same page on this. He won one he really shouldn't have that shocked sure. the world that really meant a lot because I think he beat one of the greatest teams ever assembled. And then he lost one that was unforgivable and will – uh, be a blemish on his resume for the entirety of his career. And as long as we speak about him, when Dirk Nowitzki and no all-stars beat him. Or there's like, another one that he should have won that they got absolutely annihilated in. If you look at talent and that's the yeah. last one he, whenever yeah. they got absolutely. But then Jonathan, there's a number one, another one that he won that he shouldn't have won, but for Ray Allen and his heroics, right? That's a good point. That's a good point. Yeah. That we need to do a whole episode on that Dirk Nowitzki title because I think that is the the best ring. I, I give that ring more value than any ring in NBA history, followed probably closely by a LeBron's Cleveland ring. What do you think about? I that? was going to say I think that one might. I don't know. You, you do you remember who that Dirk Nowitzki's teams beat? No. Oh, yeah. 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 You're right. The run was amazing. Um, the run was amazing. Now I'll say this too. Okay. You say that LeBron's team, the one that he shouldn't have won, was beat one of the best teams ever assembled. I completely disagree about that. I do not okay. think that that team was one of the best teams ever assembled. Durant wasn't on that team. That was, you know, that I mean, there's a they won 73 games. I got it, blah blah blah, whatever. But I mean, that's yeah. what I was talking about. Is like they yeah. won more games than anybody's ever won. So yeah, I mean, you could argue that, but I, there's a lot of teams that have the won Durant teams. Games. The Durant teams were better for sure. But there's also without a lot question. of finals. Yeah, yeah, teams. without question. I mean, you know, so anyhow, go ahead. Yeah, yeah that's tough. That, that would be a great episode to, to kind of follow that Nowitzki team and look at the playoff results and kind of go through there and really yeah. take a really close look at uh, who was on. Well, Nowitzki would be on this list if he had that title. Unquestionably, Nowitzki would be on this list. Where would Nowitzki be on this list if he had not won that title? He, he would be top five for sure. For sure. better than Iverson. It's yes. not close. Yes. Uh, the, the issue comes in when you start talking about those damn power forwards, man. It always gets complicated when you talk about Barkley, Barkley, Stockton, Malone, and Garnett. You know, when you yeah. talk about those guys, it's like, God, Houston yeah. McHale would sneak in there, but now I don't think you can put McHale on that list now. Um, never the best player on the on the, on the team issue with right. McHale. Um, that's awesome. That's a cool list. Okay, so let's talk about uh, guys who are playing right now. And I don't want to talk about, like, I'm not going to talk about John Morant and Zion or, you know, yeah. guys like that. I'm talking about guys that are – if not, they're definitely on the downside, if not in the twilight of their career. They can still play. So there is a chance they could sneak out a title. Um, a couple of these guys, if they won a title, would definitely not be the best player on their team, and one of them would. Uh, okay. So let's let's talk about guys that you can think of that are playing right now that if they end their career, let's say they end their career tomorrow, they'd be on this list. Well, we'll – and I'm not ranking anybody right now, okay, but – if you yeah, we're not ranking, we're just talking through this. Yeah, these Russell guys Westbrook. would be on the list. I have four that I think these four would definitely be on this list. Sure. Russell Westbrook and James Harden are the first two that come to mind. For both, me. yes, 100 percent Both Russ and both Harden would definitely finish as a top 10 who never won a title if they don't. For sure. Now, who would they take out? Tracy McGrady. Um McGrady didn't make our list. Oh, that's right. I'm sorry. Mello. So they would take out Dominique. Who Mello. was 10? Mello, Neek, Nash. Mello, probably Mello and Neek. They'd kick out both of those guys. I agree that if they both don't win a title, Westbrook and Harden, top to bottom, are better players than Mello and Neek. It's hard yes. to say because Neek is just so – he was so just unique and special yeah. and just like from my yeah. childhood. It's hard to, to listen to me say that, especially watching Westbrook play right now. I know, I know. But, but 
Yeah. Westbrook, we'd have to talk about. Harden is definitely better than Dominique Wilkins. Can't. There is no question in my mind that James Harden, like him or not, and I'm not a huge fan of the way he plays and all that shit, but Harden but is definitely better than Dominique Wilkins. You can't talk about Westbrook because I think Westbrook's career has been on par with Harden's from a standpoint of when you think about the fact he was better than Harden when they went to the finals and lost. He was a more important player to that team, right? Mm -hmm. He did the triple-double thing four times. He did it, win an MVP. Harden won an MVP. So I think they're what, what? You know, I don't think it's – and and so Dominique was – But Harden's oh, such a good defender. That's true. He really is. Yeah. <laughs> really works hard at it, too. That's the best part about it. Yeah. Anyhow, it's all about um, heart. Interesting. Are you, counting, are you counting Embiid in something like this? Yeah. No, he's, he's not there yet. He, he's not old enough. Yeah. No, no, no. I'm not counting Embiid. Uh, I'm not counting, uh, you know, um, no, I'm not, I'm not, I did not count NBA. There's just too much meat left on the bone. I think okay. we could see five years of all NBA and B. So I'm not, I'm not going to like, I'm assuming, well, I don't need, who, who, who's your next guy then? I got Dame Lillard on my list. Oh yeah, for sure. I mean, Lillard, sure. if he retires today, is he not better than Carmelo? I think he, yeah. Great question. I don't know. For sure. I think so. Yeah, for sure. Look at that. Look at that. I, you know, and I again, I'm coming off. I'm always transparent on this channel. I have a, a large, a sizable Damian Lillard basketball card collection. And those who watch the channel know that. Um, Dame Lillard's, oh my God, his PER is going to be much better. Yeah, he's 32, 4, and 7 this year. He's 25, 4, and almost 7. Uh, let's get Carmelo up here and go back and forth. I could hit the compare feature, but I find this sometimes easier. Yeah, I mean, and again, here's the problem. The problem when you compare, right, is we haven't had the down Lillard years. We haven't had Lillard who's averaging 16 a game. That'll bring his career averages down at some point, just like it did for Carmelo. Uh, 35, you know, 45, 35, 81. Lillard, uh, 47, 37, 92. Effective field goal percentage. Career Lillard is 52. Um, sorry, Carmelo is 48. Win shares 108. I think Lillard's already over his win shares, so it's close 102. Lillard's mm -hmm. gonna blow him away with win shares. Uh, yeah. Lillard's PER is gonna be significantly, significantly better. I think Lillard's better. Um, hundred percent. Like I don't even think it's an argument. Yeah. Look, yeah. our guy. Look what I look at. I just happened to see over here. USA basketball clinched a spot in the 2023 FIBA World Cup with an 88-77 win over Uruguay. Uh, Longtime NBA guard Langston Galloway played a key role. It's good to see Lang. You know, he's, yep. I know he's doing the USA thing, getting to travel all over the world. He's yep. been on. He's been on my channel actually. I don't know if you get to see that episode. He was on the channel. That's awesome. Uh, we'll have to get him on here with both of us one day. You know, when he's in the off season, when he's got some time to chat. But uh, I'm yep. sure he's got some awesome stories. Um, all right, so. Yes, Westbrook and Harden, yes. There's two more I can think of, and one of them is better than both those guys. Oh, and Lillard. We talked about Lillard. There's one guy you're forgetting who's – Who mean, am I forgetting? Why am I forgetting this guy? You're forgetting he's the top three, top five-point guard of all time. Oh, Chris Paul. What am I thinking? Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Chris Paul squarely yeah. Um, yeah. squarely in the top ten. You know, yeah. you start talking about Chris Paul versus Steve Nash. That would be an interesting comparison that we could talk about and argue about. Chris Paul versus Ewing. Chris Paul's definitely better than Melo and Neek. Um, Gervin, yes. I don't know. The question is where we fall. You know, like does he, does he, does he, is he better than Iverson? You know, like it, it, it's, it's an interesting call. He's um, good. Yeah. He's freaking good, dude. Yeah. He, he's good. I know he's had some, it's just, it's just so hard to, um, it, I like, I'm aware of recency bias. I know it exists. And I still fall victim to it, like just watching Chris Paul play now. Yeah, to even like three years ago, he just doesn't look the same. And the same can be said about Iverson. He was terrible his last few years, horribly inefficient, terrible yeah. decision maker, couldn't come to grips with the fact that his body had changed and his abilities had changed. You know, all these guys. Ewing was horrific to watch late in his career. Neek was terrible. You know, he played for the yeah. freaking Celtics at some point. And it was actually okay with the Celtics, believe it or not. I didn't know that. Did you know that? No, I didn't. He was actually decent with the Celtics. Yeah, do you know the? It's like it's like Russ. Dude, people forget that when he was with OKC, he was a serviceable mid-range shooter. He, you know, he was. He, that's what made him unguardable was because he was so freaking athletic. He could make a seventeen-footer also. You know, but yep. now you 
I mean, people are backing off him in the lane. That doesn't even make sense. But when yeah. did Neek do his ACL? He did it. Um, one ACL, it was his Achilles. I'm, I'm sorry, I meant Achilles. Yeah. When did he do it? And that was back when Achilles was a death sentence. When did he do his Achilles? Before the Clippers thing. No, it was with the Clippers. He was with, oh, Clippers. with the Clippers. Okay. So he came back from that. Uh, yeah, it was because there he played 25. He came back from that, played 77 games. Uh, for the Boston Celtics the next season, average almost 18 a game, John. Yeah, yeah, he was. I good. didn't realize, I thought he was just kind of fat and slow and terrible. Yeah, maybe I'm thinking of Sean Kemp. Uh, but uh, and then averaged 18 the next season at age 37. He averaged 18 at age 37 yep. for the Spurs. Yep, he was gonna score, dude. That was <laughs> that's what he did. <laughs> he left the Celtics, played in Greece at age 36, came mm -hmm. back to the NBA at age 37, and dropped 18 a game. And they went back got, to Italy, then came back to the NBA again. Got caught on a moped with a lot of drugs when he was in Greece. Really? Lots, lots of drugs, yeah. <laughs> this is going to be called the cocaine episode, isn't it? I'm just going to title it <laughs> the cocaine episode. It just keeps coming up over and over. I hear you brought it from George Gervin, who just showed up in Athens at some point. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Yeah, he was meeting George Gervin at a uh, local cafe to uh, have some nose candy. Hey, if you were ever wondering why they really called George Gervin Iceman, now you know. Yeah. Now we know. <laughs> it was, was going to be the snowman, and they're like, no, it's too obvious. Uh, all right, so uh, we've gone through our list. Mellow 10, Neek 9, Nash 8, Ewing 7, George Gervin the, uh, the snowman 6, Iverson 5, Barkley 4, Stockton 3, Baylor, Elgin Baylor 2, Carl Malone won. Uh, and then we've got Chris Paul, Westbrook, Harden, and Lillard who are knocking on the door, you know, if they don't happen to put a ring on their finger. All right, let's get to the episode. Uh, the part of the episode, famous nicknames. I'm going to start throwing nicknames out for you. Love and it. you've got to try to guess who it is. I'm going to try. I want to see how many you can get on just one nickname. Yep. Do you want the softball first or do you want the softball last so we end on a good note? No, no start it first. Go you want momentum. All right, let's get some momentum. Clark Kent. Kurt Rambis. Okay, good. Okay, good. That was the one that I knew you would get. Yeah. Now, <laughs> some of these, I pulled nicknames to kind of give you uh, a chance. And some of them I pulled uh, just because they're so funny and we've never heard them. And I know you have no chance that we're just going to laugh about them. Okay. Black president. <laughs> um, hmm. Is, so is, what's is, funny is he was given this nickname before Obama was the first black president, half black president, right? Okay, so this guy that, back when we we're like black president, that's crazy. We could never have a black president. No, we had a black president, but this nickname was given before Obama. So black president can't be Danny Green then. Okay, okay let me give you his his next nickname, Hibachi. I should know this. You should get it on Hibachi, but if you don't, you're definitely going to get it on his most. Common nickname. Okay, go with the next one. Go with the next okay, one. Okay, let me give you a hint before I give you the next nickname because the next nickname you're gonna be like, "Oh, I'm an idiot." I used to wear his shoes when we play when we play pickup at Dunham. I used to wear his shoes, and our friend Brandon Denley used to make fun of the shoes that I wore. He had shoes for like two or three years, and I used to I loved his shoes. They were low cuts. You know, I like to play in low cuts. That's probably not gonna help. You're not a shoe guy. You were always no. wearing the stock Nike. All right, the last nickname, Agent Zero. Oh, freaking Gilbert. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So the uh, Hibachi, I thought you might get it on Hibachi, but he was most but commonly. I've heard Hibachi. Yeah. 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 But Black President, no. I mean, I've never heard that in my life. Right. Uh, all right. This one you're probably going to get because you're better at 60s, 70s, 80s stuff. This is really 70s and early 80s stuff. The Enforcer. So that Maurice Lucas. That's it. That's it. Okay. That's impressive. That's good. Yeah. Because that's a generic name. Like you could call Rick Mahorn or you know, who knows? I mean, if we looked up Rick Mahorn, it probably says the enforcer, right. but like, I think that was Maurice uh, Lucas's major name. And two other nicknames were Luke and Mo. Uh, yeah. You probably would have got it after those two for sure. Yeah. Um, <laughs> this is weird. The nickname that I pulled because I, I was like, I've never heard of this in my life. And it obviously predates the social media platform. TikTok. <laughs> You're going to go through a lot of nicknames before you get this one right. <laughs> okay, go ahead. Go to the next one. Aches and pains. <laughs> um, I'm trying to envision a scenario where you could refer to another a human being by <laughs> aches and pains. Well, aches and pains checks in the game. <laughs> I'll give you a hint. He played it, in the 60s. It, 
Billy Billy Cunningham? No, I mean, no, the Big Hurt. It's not Frank Thomas. Like that's Frank Thomas' nickname, but this is the Big Hurt. Okay, so he fouled he fouled the shit out of people. In, okay, no, no, he didn't. I don't know why. I don't know where they get the Big Hurt. I don't even know what that means. I never really understood what that meant for Frank Thomas either. Uh, Dave Counts. No, TikTok aches and pains. The Big Hurt Rabbit was another nickname he had. <laughs> How could the big hurt also be a rabbit? Yeah. All right, you ready for the last nickname? This one will help because it's it, it pulls from his name, his actual name, Elge. Elgin Baylor was yeah. the rabbit. What? Have you heard any? Have you ever heard any of those nicknames? With the Never. <laughs> Aches and pains is the is the best. Like, how do you how do you do you write about him? Aches and pains had thirty and eleven last night. Like, no, never, we, no, never. When All right. you used to see him at the draft, he looked like he hurt. He, he looked like he hurt. No, don't get me wrong. Now he looks like he's got a lot of aches and pains, but so do I. Um, all right, this is a good one. Uh, you're going to get it. The only, the only one you're not going to get is the first nickname that I'm going to give you. And the reason I wrote it down is I was like, what are you even talking about? King of the Dragons. <laughs> that's the nickname that Basketball Reference had. Yao Ming. <laughs> no, that's a great guess. That's a great guess. No. Uh, CB4. Oh, my God. Uh, Michael Cage. <laughs> no, it's a good guess. I don't know why it's a good guess, but I like it. The Bostrich. Chris Bosch? <laughs> King of the Dragons. I don't know why you CB4. I should have got I don't CB4. know. I don't know why you didn't get that. I would have thought about initials and probably gotten it by his I jersey. Got it CB4 for but uh, Bostrich, and then the last one, which I've never heard, was Boschasaurus. And I, I guess it was because he played for, for Toronto, the Raptors, the Dinosaurs, so they I called guess. him. I never heard that either. I definitely have never heard King of the Dragons, and I don't know why or the derivation. Right. Nice. What we should have done is I should have Googled where the hell did you people come up with these names yeah. and see if we could find the, the origin of these things. All right, that's it. That was a good episode. That was a good list. Uh, ten players to never win a title, the top ten players in order. There you go. You have them. Uh, let us know what you think in the comments. Uh, we want to know who uh, we forgot. Who's in the tail end of their career um, it, it, that we didn't put on our little short list of four with Chris Paul, Westbrook, Lillard, and Harden? Is there anybody better than those four guys that doesn't have a ring that's playing right now uh, that we didn't include, that we should have included. Let us know in the comments and uh, and let us know. Here's the other thing. I want to know if you think Paul Westbrook, Harden, or Lillard is going to get a ring. I don't see a, a, a pathway for any of them to get a ring. I don't either. Chris Paul? Maybe. There it is. Maybe. There, there it is. All right. Thank you guys for watching. Keep collecting. Stay positive in the hobby. And peace.